Um, it's definitely a crank no start. Let's try it. Okay. Everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we have a 2009 Nissan Titan. Very clean truck, about 130,000 miles. And the owner, he, uh, well, last week he said that he was driving and parked it, went to start it, and went to limp home mode. You could barely drive, made it home, changed the battery out. He said the battery was going kind of getting weak, and then it drove great for about another week. Then he parked it here in the garage, crank no start. Well, how about that? So, keys on, scan all the modules for codes here. Let's uh, go through them. ABS, we have a C1131, engine signal 2, BCM. Uh, TCM has a U1000 CAN communication circuit fault. That's interesting. Uh, P1705, throttle position sensor circuit. Uh, the uh, four-wheel drive module has a U1000 stored. Diff lock has a U1000 stored. But the engine control module says it's normal, so it's online. Um, it's definitely a crank no start. Let's try it. Okay. So from here, let's go right into the engine control module and see if we can read live data, see what we're missing, see if we can activate the fuel pump, it's going to be spark or fuel, <laughs> sounds like it has good compression when it's cranking, so read fault code right from here, no DTCs detected, go right into data stream, all signals, Let's just uh, choose some of the basics. <clears throat> There's engine speed. We want to make sure that uh, we see our RPM. Fuel pump relay. Uh, injector pulse. Bank 1 and bank 2. Ignition switch. And start signal. Throttle position sensors. Okay. So if I push the accelerator pedal, yep, that works. Look at the TPS. So the throttle stuck at 0 0.8 volts. Interesting. So let's crank it, see what the uh, fuel pump and the start signal do. They don't change at all. Then you get little hash marks. So we're losing communication here with the engine computer. Let's try to back out. Or are we losing communication when it's cranking? That's That could also be the case. <clears throat> so read fall code one more time. Read data stream. Okay, we're back. It's reading data. Let's look at the RPM when we're cranking. Okay, so basically the data stream is interrupted when we crank. That's not good. That's why all the other computers are setting communication codes when we crank this engine. Very interesting symptom. Okay, so we got the PicoScope hooked up to the breakout box. Just looking at the CAN signals, pins 6 and 14. The actual layout of the CAN, or the network, high-speed network here. Everything's on it, including our engine computer. 
Let's see the BCM. Here's the ECM over here. There's our DLC. And let's look at it during the crank. So two and a half bias voltage. Pin six goes up to three and a half. Pin 14 goes down to one and a half. So I'm going to crank it real quick. No change. So our network doesn't look like it's being corrupted. Next thing I want to check before jumping under the hood is a quick bidirectional test. Fuel pump relay on or off. Fuel pump is definitely on. And off. That works. The computer's online. What are we missing? Let's uh, get the scope on a coil and an injector, easily accessible. Cam and crank sensor, we'll see where those are. And maybe we can get to them right at this computer. Here's the engine computer right here. We need to see why this thing is not firing up. So with the scanner, I want to clear out all the DTCs right now, crank it, and see what sets. Will, will that communication code come right back? Or will something else happen? So, 163 codes there. What does that mean? No, default code. Vehicle speed sensor. Switch to two wheel drive. Yep. So it's in four high right now. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay, let's just clear fault code. Yes. That's interesting. It doesn't want to clear that module, but don't really care. So key off, key on. Hmm. Well, that was unexpected. <laughs> so I cleared, just cleared all the codes out of all the modules and the truck fired up. Very interesting. Well, unfortunately, the truck started and now it's starting every time flawlessly. Dang. Uh, what I told the customer is, Drive it, uh, let it sit overnight. If it doesn't crank in the morning or it doesn't start, we'll be right back. But um, it's, it's under warranty. We got, we got to figure out this problem. Hi everyone, welcome back to part two of the Nissan Titan uh, crank no start when cold case study. So if you remember last time, uh, the truck actually started up and never acted up again. So. I told the customer, you know, drive it around and take some notes. When, you know, on cold mornings, does this thing start or not? Well, in the last few days, it's been not too cold, around, you know, high 20s, low 30s in the morning. And he said the truck started up no problems. However, today, it's in the teens, and this thing is definitely going to act up. So... Uh, in cases like this, when you have a limited window of opportunity for testing, you really need to have a game plan before showing up on site. Plus, it's going to be cold, so you don't want to waste your time and get, you know, frozen <laughs> while trying to decide what to do. So, let's take a look at some wiring diagrams, make a game plan of where we want to hook up our scope, and 
So we're very efficient about pinpointing the root cause of this uh, crank no start, no calm, only when cranking apparently uh, in cold temperatures. So here's a wiring diagram of the engine computer. So what do we want to check and key on and then key crank? Well, since we have a no communication when we're cranking, or at least uh, that's the way you know the scanner lost the data, is the computer missing something like a power or a ground? So powers and grounds in this computer, if we drag let's drag this up. So we have constant battery right here white wire we have two grounds and then we have an ignition in or their ignition switch this blue wire and these are the interactive diagrams which are actually pretty neat so this is hot and on or start now what else is there to power up this computer? We have an ECM relay which is controlled by so this is the control wire, see it's highlighted controlled by the computer when you turn the ignition switch on that wire is pulled to ground, energizes that relay and then where do these wires go? The relay output we, we definitely want to monitor that while cranking. So as you can see, <clears throat> oh this is ignition power, I'm sorry that was not a ground. This is power coming in from that ECM relay right to the computer. So the computer kind of turns on that relay and powers itself up at these two pins. The grounds are up here, pin 115 and 116. They're tied to E9 and then there's one more ground if we zoom out, these are sometimes are a little cumbersome to use, but right there is the black wire, also E9, right front of engine compartment. Okay. So keep in mind this computer lives in kind of an awkward spot by the right uh, rear of the engine compartment. It's tucked away. We want to pick some points that are very easy to check. Also, we don't want to disturb the computer if there's you know a bad contact in there or a solder joint that you can easily disturb when you're digging around. We want to pick some points to check that are away from the computer. Okay, so this ECM relay output, for example, this brown wire feeds a few sensors, feeds the engine computer, it also feeds mass airflow sensor right up here, this brown power wire, it's a 12 volt, then it crosses over here, feeds the exhaust, uh, let's see, or camshaft, crankshaft position sensor, and the EVAP canister purge control. All right. And this white and blue also comes from uh, from our relay. It's another power wire and that feeds the ignition coils. So a lot of stuff powered up by this ECM relay. So channel one in the scope I want to put right on the brown wire at the mass airflow sensor. That will uh, monitor the state of this ECM relay and key on and cranking. So we got that's one channel. We got three more. Where else do we want to put them? So channel two I want to put on the five volt reference wire at this ba battery current sensor. Easy to get to right next to the battery. So on this truck, the only 5 volt sensors that we have are this battery current sensor, then 
power steering pressure sensor, refrigerant pressure sensor, and I think the EVAP. This diagram is a little. Here we go. EVAP control pressure system, pressure sensor, left rear underside of vehicle. So those are the five volt, three wire sensors. The other ones, like position sensors, they're powered by 12 volts. So channel two, five volt reference. The red and yellow wire. Okay, channel three. I want to put that on an injector control wire because the injectors are powered up by not the ECM relay but the ignition relay. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so here we have the injectors. They are powered by this fuse 55 15 amp from the IPDM. So, where does that come from? Well, there's fuse 55 in the IPDM, and it comes from this ignition relay. That's not the ECM relay. <clears throat> this is called the ignition relay, and that's controlled by you see G comes in here from diagram 2. Here's our ignition switch. So in on or start, you see this wire comes over here, through fuse 59 and goes to G, ignition relay uh, control. So once this relay is powered up, then we get power to all these fuses, <clears throat> including our injectors right here. So let's go back to... Our ECM and also this fuse 54 that comes from the ignition relay and you can see that powers up for example our oxygen sensor heaters all right so that's channel 3 so that checks the ignition relay plus the actual injector control. So when we're cranking, we want to see the injector being pulsed. If it's not, we'll also see that in channel 3. So it's kind of like killing two birds with one stone. Uh, finally, channel 4, I want to check a sensor ground. And by checking a sensor ground that goes through the computer, we will also check the main ground of the computer without ever touching the computer. That's kind of the goal here. So we can go right for, again, the mass airflow sensor, very easy to access. You can see that is grounded right here at the ECM, ground A. And if we have a poor ground, you know, going to the body from the computer, this will also be elevated. So key on and during the crank, we want to see that ground stay low. So those are the first four channels, and then based on the results from this test, we can go further. You know, it, are we losing control to the ECM relay, or if, is everything staying powered up, then the computer is just not pulling the injector down? Is the 5 volt reference staying high? That will tell us a lot. And then, after that, we can um, figure out our next test. So, let's get out there to the truck and... Uh, get cold. Alright, so the truck is stone cold. We got our four channels hooked up. Channel one is on the mass airflow power feed. It comes from the ECM relay. Channel two is on the 5 volt reference to the battery current sensor. It comes from the computer. Channel three, injector control wire. And channel four is on the ground to the MAF, which is tied into the computer ground. So let's see what happens when we turn the key on. And key off. Okay, and then that turns off. So let's pause it there, save that, and then we'll try to crank it. 
All right, let's try to crank it. <clears throat> so the blue and the green traces should go to 12 volts. They do. Crank it. Okay, interesting. And key off. So this is uh, very interesting. We don't see anything wrong at the moment. Our ECM relay is staying on during the crank. Our ignition relay is staying on during the crank. We're not losing the 5 volt reference. And our ground is staying where it should be during the crank. But our injector is not firing. So there you can see, I think it fired once. Right there. And that was after I released the key. So we have no injector pulse right now. Um, let's get in here with the scanner and check the codes one more time. So on the scanner we don't have those same codes that we did last time. Now remember the all mode all wheel drive we could not delete these so I'm not too worried about these and then we have a TPMS sensor in the BCM. So very interesting that we don't have the same codes So what would be the next test here? For this truck. We see we have no injector pulse. And yet we have no codes. It's like a missing cam or crank. We could definitely... Um, scope the crank sensor. Again, read fault code, no DTCs detected, data stream, all signals. Do coolant temp, engine speed, injector pulse. Throttle position sensors. Let's crank it, and we'll see if we get the hash marks. And I'll start my scope again here. Hi, fired up. We got hash marks. Let's do one more. Shut her down. So we can see that injector pulse, once it starts pulsing, then we're in good shape, but we're missing the injector pulse initially. Uh, so in this case, I am suspecting the ECM itself, especially when it's cold, Probably a cracked solder joint, and eventually when you have the key on for a little while, the circuits in there heat up and it fires up. Um, one experiment I wanted to do was put a heat gun on it if it didn't start, but you know it started on its own here. So in this case, that's, that's the final call, ECM. We could take it out, take a look at the board, see if there's anything obvious in terms of uh, cracked joints, but otherwise, uh, I think that's the end of this diagnosis. So I moved two of the channels to the cam and crank sensors at the computer. Easy to probe right there. So let's see what happens when we crank this up. The channel B is now CKP, channel D is now the phase, the CMP sensor. And we'll make sure that the um, voltage scales are all at 20 volts. We still have our injector control wire and the ECM relay. So let's do zoom. Let's 
see what happens here. Key on and crank. Okay, what do we see? Ah, uh, interesting. So, the yellow channel is the phase sensor. And is that good? One, three, what is going on here? Do you see these high sections? And then once it cranks up, then we have normal three, four, two, one. Three, four, two, one, three, four, two, one. Three, four, two, one. But right here, when we're cranking, this is messed up. We have two and then it stays high. It should be default low with pulses going up. So, good thing we checked that. Cam sensor looks to be failing. It is a common problem in these trucks. So, good news for the owner. We need a cam sensor. Now let's look at the crank. So when the engine fires up, there's a sync notch. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So it's 18 tooth minus 1. That looks good. Not missing any teeth. That cam sensor, that's the problem. That's actually what controls the injector sequencing. And you can see right here where the cam sensor is messed up, the injector pulse width is all over the place. And once it actually fires up, then we have normal injector action and it triggers it on that single cam pulse. So definitely worth it to check your inputs before calling any modules. Powers, grounds, and inputs. Um, well, we should get a new crank or a cam sensor and this truck should be should be fixed. So a little bonus footage on the Nissan Titan crank no start case study. Very interesting. So that last test that we did measuring the inputs, cam and crank, and injector pulse, uh, was the money shy. It, the crank, or I'm sorry, the cam position sensor was failing, especially during a cold crank, and the injector was not firing or had the wrong pulse width and timing, explaining the no start. So, again, no code stored for it. You would say, what, how would you find that without a scope? No chance. Um, so the scope was key in this diagnosis and uh, the strategy could have been a little more efficient um, kind of the Bernie Thompson method just put your scope on everything right injector coil inputs cam crank uh, we would have seen it right away uh, the no com issue with the scanner that was a little misleading again could be a scanner issue but I don't know why the data was dropping out on a crank uh, can't really explain that. No codes were set uh, after I erased them the first time. Uh, and it was kind of a coincidence that it fired up after the codes were erased. So go figure. Um, last thing I want to show is these cam and crank sensors. You need to install the exact right one. And that's easier said than done on a Nissan because there's even a TSB here where these sensors, they all look identical, cam and crank, and it says uh, 
Make sure the crankshaft position and the camshaft position sensor are installed in the correct locations. So they look identical. And how do you get the right part number? The crank sensor is down here by the bell housing underneath the truck. There's a transmission pan. And the cam sensors, well, there's three of them. The phase sensor, the input for the injectors, is right here, front of the engine, on the left head, on the front. There are also two sensors up here, one on each head. Those are for the intake you know, variable timing system, uh, but apparently they have the exact same part number. So 2007 to 2009 uh, vehicles are equipped with intake valve timing control, and these sensors are identical to the camshaft position sensor. All three sensors shown in figure three use the same Nissan part number. And there's some tips, like if it has a circle, that's the crankshaft position sensor. If it does not have a circle, it's the camshaft position sensor. Uh, the part numbers on all data, camshaft position sensor, there's the part number 237314M50B. And for the crankshaft position sensor, again, misleading. I don't know why they put camshaft here, but that's 23731AL61A. They look identical. The prices are almost the same, but you can get in trouble if you install the wrong one in the wrong spot. Um, so, that's it. <laughs> Just a quick little tip, and good luck with uh, diagnosing crank no-starts with no codes. Always interesting. Thanks all for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.